today's era, everyone has a camera in their pocket. We can take pictures anytime, anywhere. It's so convenient to snap whatever that is in front of us. We treat our phone as a second brain, helping us to remember every trivial things. And thinking back, camera phones used to be one of those two-in-one features. But now, it became an essential feature for every phone. And I have to say, one of the greatest invention of all time. I love this convenience. And it's because of this and the accessibility of cameras that got me started on my first video, second, third, and until today. But it's also this convenience that caused us to have a digital mountain of photos, thinking that we'll need them or use them to recall some memories. But the truth is, they just hide in our hard disk and memory cards. However, there are a few things we can filter off, remove photos, and curate a meaningful album. And for now, let us talk about deleting them. First will be screenshot and random reminder. I'm actually someone who always takes screenshot and photos of things I don't want to use my brain to remember. Things like the books to read, or quotes from books that I want to reread. But most of the time, once they are in my album, I won't get back to them and they just sit in my album for years. We do that because it's convenient and we as a human are lazy. But I don't think it's wrong because there are just way too many things for us to remember every day. So a good way is to write it down somewhere in your notes. Create a list for whatever you are interested in. So at least those inspiration and recommendations are in a form of text neatly organized in the list and not exist as a random screenshot that is lost in the ocean of photos. Whether it's an accidental pocket shot or blurry shot or a clip of you wanting to take a picture but you are in video mode, I'm sure you will have at least one of those in your phone. So just take some time and delete them. Duplicates Especially when it comes to a photo of ourselves or an outfit shot for the gram, we tend to take a ton of them because we are so self-conscious and we need 100 photos to find one best angle. Not gonna lie, I have tons of them still in my hard disk from my fashion days. Unless those duplicate shots tell a story. If not, I'm sure you're fine with just one of them. I really need to delete mine. Meaningless photos. I'm sure everyone has a photo like this, this, and this. And let's be honest here, none of them means anything. The sunset might be nice to look at, but again, what's that got to do with me? A photo of an iconic landmark is cool, but if it's exactly like the thousands of photos on Google image, then what's the point? Food photos are one of the worst. It's like taking photos of nice perfume bottles. They serve as a visual cue, but they don't necessarily remind us the taste of the food, the smell of the perfume. But you rarely see anyone take pictures of their perfume bottle. But I do have an exception. Unless those food reminds you of a particular trip, for example, the nasi champer from Bali, which seems to look and taste different across different restaurants. I have no idea why, but that reminds me of my first trip with my girl. The street food from Taiwan reminds me of the one and only few trip I had with my fam, so I really treasure that. The pho from Vietnam reminds me of my post-army trip with my group of friends. And we can eat it almost every day. But of course, when it comes to finding meaningless photos, that can be subjective. So I think it's important for one to review your album every once in a while. I mean, just like our physical clutter, what's useful to you yesterday might not be useful to you today. So you might want to take some time and classify, filter out what's needed and what's trash and curate a meaningful album just by asking yourself, what's the purpose of you keeping those photos? I love to look back at my old photos. I don't know about you guys, but that's the beauty about the pictures of yourself. It's a form of escapism and it makes you feel relaxed. And there's a study that showed looking back at our old photos can be even more relaxing than meditation. And I was wondering, can photos strengthen our memory? So initially, I thought it was pretty obvious. In order for us to create stronger memories, all we need to do is ditch the idea of using our phones or photos to remember things because that would signal to our brain that we don't have to focus on little details to remember things. All we need to do is depend on this thing. 
Some studies in the 60s found when people are told a computer will save a piece of information, we will intentionally forget the information because we believe that there's no need to waste the energy to store it in our brain. However, there are conflicting research show that taking photos can encourage us to look carefully at the visual details and therefore remember it better later on with stronger visual memories. Sadly, that comes with a price. What do we need to sacrifice when we are taking photos? For that, let me bring you back to my Bali trip again. And no doubt, photos is a good medium for us to recall back visual memories. But what's there to remember when we are not paying attention on what's in front of us? During the trip, I was so overwhelmed with the fact that I want to take tons of beautiful videos. So I set up drones for aerial shot. But after the trip, I realized my attention was all on the camera settings. Pairing my phone with my drone and thinking of different angles to make beautiful shots. No doubt, some of the visual memories are strong. However, I've forgotten about the feeling when the sun is hitting on me, the impact of the wave, things my girlfriend and I was talking about, and the feeling of being present at the moment with my four other senses. So, I have to say, the best way to create strong memories is as simple as paying attention. In some sense, we can see it as the law of equivalent exchange. We use our attention to exchange with memories. However, our attention are infinite and there's only so much we can absorb. So if we choose to put our focus on documenting what's in front of us, at the same time, wanting to capture the most beautiful photos, concurrently sharing it in your social media, with the thoughts of communicating with your peers. Not to mention with the additional distraction from the notifications. Clearly, we'll have to give up on some of the details that is happening around us. The feeling of the wind. The sound of the trees. The soft wool from a ship. The smell of the sea. Even though taking photos is a great way for us to document down visual memories, but they aren't the whole story of our memories. So it's up to us if we want to be present at the moment or living our life in a photo. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to bash taking photographs. I love to take photos and I love to tell stories through video making and I'll still continue to do that. But how can we do it intentionally? How can we make every shot count? Other than reviewing and deleting photos, I think it's utterly crucial for us to limit the time when we are taking photos. We need to understand what's the intention behind those photos. I think throughout human history, our intention behind taking photos changed drastically from the first introduction of the camera. It was used to commemorate the event that was happening right in front of us. Right people, right location, right time. Just to freeze the moment in front of our eyes forever. It was just as pure as this. However, in today's context, with the help of social media, taking photos is something we do to express our feelings, show others what we are doing, and what we have bought. The content of the photos has always been a tool, a tool for us to remember stuff. But now, it's a tool that connects us with other people who saw your posts, people who engage you through social media. I hope I don't sound like a salty guy who is bashing about social media and at the same time being a hypocrite because I'm documenting my life and learnings on the internet. I don't think social media is inherently evil. In fact, I think it's a new way of communication that we need to know how to find the balance. But as someone who has to think of content to post online, I would say it's indeed exhausting because you'll probably spend a lot of time finding the best photo to post on the internet. Sacrificing the time taking picture when you can be present at the moment of event you want to remember. Also, it makes the process of taking photos less enjoyable because it makes us self-conscious about what other people think of us. I try my best not to take photos with the intention to post online, but take photos because I want to remember that exact moment. Let us take some moment to look at film photography during a time when digital cameras are not common. The difference between analog camera and digital camera. Analog camera is a single purpose item, but that also means that there's no distractions. And there's no way we can check or judge ourselves right after the shot without having the patience to wait till it's developed. 
and due to the price of buying a film roll and developing the roll, it costs money every time we open the shutter. Thus, our mind tells us to make every single shot count. Even if it's not perfect, who knows until we get it developed. And for the digital counterpart, the value of each snap from our phone is zero dollar. Hence, we can go crazy and reckless with our shutter. Have a burst shot of every frame. Before you even notice, you have hundreds of similar shots. I know it doesn't cost any for us to take multiple shots, and we can even choose the best version of it. But when the things are so accessible, we tend not to appreciate little things like shutter opening for us at that moment. And not to mention, the paradox of choice. The decision verdict and the paralysis analysis we'll encounter when we have to choose the best photo out of 100 shots. There's something beautiful about not knowing how your photo looks. It's the uncertainty and surprise makes the whole process enjoyable. And the intention is pure and simple. You just want to open a shutter, freeze the moment, and recall it in the future. And not perfecting a photo for your social media. And what's important is to leave some time and attention to absorb what's in front of you visually. Appreciate the smell, the sound, the thoughts, the physical touch, and even the emotion. The right location, the right people, the right time. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you appreciate it, a click on the like button will help a lot with this channel. And you might want to consider subscribing to this channel if you are new here. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye bye.